and China's retaliation. We've done a lot of time trying to figure this out. And you get to the, the fourth step. It's, it's a war. It's a real war. And if you look at the history of, of terrorists, they've resulted in, a lot of times, real wars. So I get a little nervous when you start down that path. And, you know, but I don't think, well, I hope, you know, I, I worry about um, the erratic, erraticness, is that a word, erraticness, of the president sometimes. But you hope that, uh, that, that you don't go down that If you go down that path, you're kind of, uh, there's a word, it begins with an F and ends with a K, you're kind of that, <laughs> okay? But if there's none of that, I think you'll get a good job. I think the economy will probably stay okay. I'm a little worried about higher interest rates right now. Um, but, it, you know, it's, I, I think that uh, it'll probably hold up for when you get out, so, which is kind of important. I think it is a pretty good economy right now around the world, especially the United States. So I think that answered, right? Wow, it feels like, you know, you ever see this, this show, this um, Joy? Anybody see the movie Joy? Where at first she gets no calls and then she gets a lot of calls coming in. <laughs> like this, I got a lot of people lining up now. I feel like joy from that movie. Let's go Hi, with the I'm Katie Glass, first year MBA. Um, one of the benefits we have being part of the Tepper Network is all of the people that we've met or will meet along our career that serve as mentors and advisors. Can you talk about a mentor that you had early in your career and, and the impact that they had on you? Um... Oh, I'm trying to think if I had any mentors early. I mean, when I was a, I guess when I was out of under, undergrad, out of Pitt, I, I had a little bit of a mentor at my first job at Equibank, which I, I don't know which bank it's part of now. Um, he, I just always remember one thing he said. He, he said about projections. You want to know what he said about projections? He said projections are like assholes. Everybody has one. So that <laughs> stuck with me. So I'm just this truth. I've always remembered that. That was actually a true story. So, um, but I think mentors, I had, um, I want to tell you about mentors, okay? Mentors are a little bit tricky. So I had a mentor, actually I had a mentor at Goldman Sachs, a little bit of a mentor at Goldman Sachs. His name was uh, Bob Rubin, um, who became co-chair of the firm, eventually became secretary of the treasury of the United States at some point. Um, now Bob, Bob was kind of a mentor, but there's... You know, the, the, the third time when I didn't become a partner, it was kind of Bob Rubin's fault, and I'll tell you why. So you gotta be careful about this mentor game, right? So he was kind of a mentor, and he liked, he liked being on the floor, and he liked talking to me. Now, I'm, um, at some point, Bob was, had the role of head of fixed income before he became you know, chairman, and vice chairman and chairman. And on the way to doing that, he, before that, he was the head of fixed income. And so I would talk to Bob. I was a head trader, and I would go talk to Bob. Eventually, a guy by the name of John Corzine, who became the governor of the state of New Jersey, um, became the head of fixed income. Now, when John Corzine became the head of fixed income, he came from the government side. Bob Rubin came from risk arbitrage. So I was in junk bonds. So um, um, Bob Rubin knew about junk bonds because they have an equity component, so I would talk to him still. I would still go to his office, and I wouldn't go to Corzine's office. Well, Bob Rubin should have said, go to Corzine's office. Okay, because when that third time came up to be partner, Corzine killed me. So what I heard in that partnership thing, right? So even if you have a mentor that becomes secretary of the treasurer, it still is a problem. You've got to still think for yourself. You've got to know the, the playing field. But, um, you know, so that, you know, that was my fault away for not knowing the playing field. But Bob was a, was a questionable mentor, right, at that point? No, it's lucky for me, maybe he was a very good mentor, because if it was a Goldman Sachs, I would have been not nearly as successful. So maybe Bob was a very good mentor. <laughs> but at the time, when I didn't get that, that partnership the third time, and, and I did everything, I mean, I had, I put a lot of things together, I just, you know, he, you know he, he was basically, that was the reason I didn't get it, he didn't like me, for that reason. He thought I wasn't one of his people. So, I don't know if that, that helps or doesn't help, so. No, that was a great answer, thank you. A lot of stories there, right? <laughs> Hi, my name is Rachel Frame. I'm a second year undergrad in the Tepper School of Business. Uh, speaking about interest rates, I had a question. In light of uh, the Fed raising rates and with equity prices at an all-time high, 
Where do you foresee the bond and stock markets in the remainder of the year? Where, when? And for the remainder of 2018. Um, listen, it's, it's, it's tough right now because uh, historically uh, yields are fairly low. Um, so, it, it, but it's, it's, it's kind of complicated because I'm actually tonight I'm trying to figure out what the BOJ is doing. Because the BOJ, either this meeting or next meeting, may change their interest rate policy, which will affect our treasuries too and will affect the stock affect the stock market. So I, I think, as far as the stock market is concerned, I think they're okay. I don't think it's great. I think we might have reached the highs for the year. Um, and it really has to do with interest rates. I'm not sure. We're right on the cusp of breaking out on interest rates at, at this level, th around 3%. I think they closed at 2.98% on the 10-year. Actually, no, because I just looked. But. Um, <laughs> Um, but if they do, if they do, people, a lot of people don't think they're going to break higher. Most people are saying they'll only go to three and a quarter. And I think if they only go to three and a quarter through the rest of the year, the mark, stock market will be up. But too many people are saying that. You know what I'm saying? So when so many people say that, I become wary that it's not going to hold. So and if they don't hold, then stocks may have a problem. So that's. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's start rotating between the queues now. So we'll go from the right, and then we'll switch back and forth. Hi, um, my name is Eve. I'm a first year MBA at the Tepper School. Um, we learn in business school that there's a lot of focus on prioritization, prioritizing our professional choices and our classes, student groups. Can you talk a little bit about how your priorities have changed over the course of your professional career? Sure. <laughs> um, well, I think, I, I mean, I can go back. When I first got out of, I'm pointing to you because you yes. went to Pitt too. But when I first got out of college, I mean, you know, there's a, you, your priorities, you know, are intertwined with different parts of your life, really. So when I first got out of college, I probably was very happy to go out three or four nights a week and go out with buddies and, you know, then try to come into work the next day and not be too, stone, too drunk to work. So. <laughs> um, Eventually, that got too old, and I got kind of tired of doing that, so then I wanted to go, you know, then I settled down and, and decided I better get married, or find somebody to get married to, because I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, and I think that, you know, you, your, priorities, your priorities go, and then you have kids, and then you, you know, for me, it was trying to figure out that balance, because I wanted to do this, I wanted to do the other things in life. I wanted to coach Little League, which I did. I coached uh, baseball and softball and soccer. Um, so that was important to me. So at that point in time, in, and that was a priority to me, to, where I put a lot of my energies was, you know, the balance between work and, and, and my kids. And, you know, you want to be as successful as you can in, in all aspects of your life, not just in your, in your business part, but your personal part, if you can do it. Um, I think eventually as my, you know, as my kids got older, I probably switched some of that energy that I was putting on them into into more charitable sort of things. I always was charitable, but it, you know, just more involvement in charity and, and more of that sort of stuff. You know, the, the other thing that I think you have to do that I probably, <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm gonna make a joke about myself, that I probably neglected sometimes. You have to also think about your personal health and your, which I, do, I don't neglect that necessarily, but you know, doing enough physical activity, going to the gym enough times, that's what I was gonna make the joke about myself. <laughs> um, you know, you know and, and those sort of things too, so that's, I think that's more of a priority now, you know, that whole balance away. And also, for me, trying to see my kids, you know, it becomes as you don't, as your kids aren't in your house anymore, you know, you like to try to figure out how you can see them. And then the point where your kids have their kids, it becomes a different priority. So I think you have different phases of your life. It's almost like you have different lives, right? You had a life when you were with your parents, you have a life now, and you're going to have a few more lives before you're done. And I think you try to, you know, every one of those lives, I think when you're younger, you're, you're Listen, especially for guys. Guys are idiots. If you, <laughs> I mean, every, every, every woman would agree that every guy under 25 is an absolute idiot. So, and I was an absolute idiot, too. So, um, Some guys are still... I'm not going to mention you right now. <laughs> a buddy of mine's here. So, um, and, anyways, but I do think there's different priorities at different points in their life. And I think, there's, when you're, I think if you can figure it out, that balance, which you guys all struggle with when you're in school because it's so, the demands are overwhelming, um, but I think that, that striving for balance should be something, no matter what your part of your life you're in, 
I think that's something you should try to prioritize or try to figure out. So that was pretty good, right? Yes. Thank you. We'll move over to the other side. Uh, hi, my name is Mansi Kumar. I'm a second year undergrad in the Tepper School of Business. Uh, and my question had to do with your interest in finance and your career in finance. Was it something you always knew you wanted to venture into, or was it more serendipitous? Uh, if so, what did that journey kind of look like, and what advice can you give to students who may not be sure what they want to specialize in within business? That's a great word. <laughs> I would not be serendipitous. Is that how you say that word? <laughs> Serendipity? There's a movie of Serendipity that I liked. I think it was with uh, Matthew Broderick mm -hmm. or something. No, yeah, no. Kuzak. Kuzak. Yeah. I get it confused yeah. with Broderick sometimes, right? Anyways, um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't just a coincidence or, or, or such. It was, uh, I think I really, one way or another, I got, a, I, I got uh, exposed to investment. I, my dad um, let me invest in a, in a stock called Career Academies. Um, I was really interested in how the stocks move. It's like I really like collecting baseball cards and you know, statistics and stuff. And then somehow I got the stocks and it's all kinds of numbers. And I love these numbers the way they played around. So, um, so I invested in this career academy. The company went bankrupt in three months, lost all my money. <laughs> um, that's probably why I'm good at bankruptcies at some point. So. So, but I always had an interest in it. And I had different schemes when I was in college. I had this great, great trading scheme that, scheme idea that kind of worked for a while and then didn't work. Um, so I always liked markets, and I was fascinated with them. And, um, so it was just natural to go into, you know, that sort of stuff just fascinated me. So I kind of liked it. So it wasn't, it wasn't by luck. And then um, I, I, you know, when I, I, I didn't go there initially. I went to Republic still, but, you know, that, you know, I soon moved to the mutual fund side. So that was kind of, uh, before that, though, I was at Equibank. I was, I started as a credit analyst, and I moved into trust department investing. So I always was trying to get back into investing somehow, so. You know, so some, for me, it was something I always tried to do. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so David, to follow up on your answer there, if you were a student to, in college... How do, how do you get a chance? I thought it would be... <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but um, just so following up on your answer there, if you were a student right now that's interested in finance, uh, whether it's an undergrad or MBA student, what are the three things you'd be focusing on? That's kind of interesting. Um, we... we, we I, I, listen, I think you still have to take the, the certain courses that you need here to understand under, under, un, the underlying parts of it. And um, I think that's one thing, uh, you know, I think some people are going to say, you know, you have to be careful because everything's going to be models and machines, machines um, to compete against machines, uh, which there's a lot of machine finance. But the machines are doing shitty this year. Really bad. <laughs> Not good. I'm kicking their ass. So... <laughs> Um, the reason, you know, the reason I know this a lot, when I went to Goldman Sachs, I had a model on the desk, a trading model, and it was just, it was just wrong. It was one of the great things about being here. I just knew the option part of it was wrong, the way they had their call prices in there, and that was a good thing to be here, because I, I, I recognized that. I had that, that knowledge from training here. Um, but now, when you see, when people talk about machines taking over, you're, the machines are only as good as people programming the machines. And when you have some times that are changing, like there might be changing higher interest rates, you're out of this long QE environment, quantitative easing environment that we've been in, or this financial crisis environment, and people are continuously programming the same damn thing. And yeah, they'll be less emotional than people, but when the times change, they don't change unless somebody who programs them changes their programs. And when times are changing fast, that doesn't, you know, doesn't work. And when you have a guy like Trump, you better, you better know how to deal with people and know how you know, different emotions work. You know, so you know, you it makes it makes for a different um, different environments. So, um, but I think what you have to understand, even if you do go into, and I don't, I, I don't necessarily think that it's not those quantitative or those black box deals aren't can't be really good, but you have to know the fundamental stuff that you learn here, how options work, how finance works, how accounting works, whether you're going to program those machines or you're going to compete against those machines. Um, you have to know that stuff. So I think, I, I, I know, I don't have to think, I know this place does a very good job of kicking your ass and making you learn that stuff. So it's, it's you know, so that, for that reason, I think you get the stuff here that you need for that. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's jump back into the audience on the right. 
Hi, Mr. Tepper. My name is Talon. I'm actually not a business student. I'm an undergraduate senior studying computer science. I'm, in, in what? Uh, I'm, I'm a senior undergraduate studying computer science. Okay, good. But that's okay. Um, well, now that's, <laughs> yeah, that's just, <laughs> no, well, that's what we're trying to do is get everybody mixed together. Right. So that's Every, excellent. Everybody else okay. who asked the question seemed to be an MBA student. So, um, no, 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 it's good. I'm okay. glad to have you here. Anyway, my question is, so a couple of years ago, a lot of companies seem to claim themselves as Uber for X, Y, and Z. And these years, a lot of companies I realized claim to build something, they, they claim to build blockchain for X, Y, and Z. And I, 